welcome dear judicial service aspirants today in this session we shall be face to face with the proficiency index route higher judicial service we are preparing for haryana judicial service from this service we can have a reach to a higher judicial service judicial officers can reach higher judicial service by seniority also one can reach higher judicial service by competing by a judicial service competition higher judicial service competition now the reach to higher judicial service as proficiency index route would mean that one can while in a service after a particular period of service as per the rules can also compete higher judicial service competition examination in this context the proficiency index route as it is for it we shall visit the provisions for appeals revisions and writ jurisdictions against the proceedings orders and final judgment orders of civil judges and magistrates for it let us chase with focus upon one judicial mind as you know when i say that we have to chase with focus upon one judicial mind that means that let us have a focus upon the judgments of a one judge of high court in this context also as has been pointed out earlier we can have a choice of judge of high court who has been elevated from the lower judicial service itself in this context of state of haryana one choice which we have already made is of justice s d anand justice as the anand had joined haryana judicial service on the basis of competitive examination he was fortunate to compete with success at the age of 20 21 years itself he joined haryana judicial service at the age of 21 and has served judicial department as civil judge and retired as a high court judge at the age of 62 justice s d anand had been elevated in 2006 and he served 
as High Court Judge for four years and retired in 2010. We are having about 4,000 judgment orders of Honorable Justice as Judge of High Court during his tenure of four years. Today, I am focusing upon last 15 judgments orders of Justice as the Angam as Judge of a High Court. And these 15 judgments are his last judgments. And these have been announced on 28th of May 2010. This visit to these judgments will help us appreciate as to how proficiency has its role to play. It is 40 years judicial experience which is at the background, back, experience, wisdom of author of these judgments. We shall visit these judgments and evaluate for oneself as to how court time is to be managed, how the justice is to be delivered. Further, we shall also visit these judgments from the point of view of imbibing the values of art of writing judgments. But our ultimate focus during this visit is to remain as to which are the situations of adjudications at lower courts which give cause to the litigants for revisions and writs. Further, these judgments will also give us an insight as to how the justice delivery system is having ventilation by way of revisions and writs, provisions. The sadhkas, the students, fulfilled with intensity of urge to be on proficiency index route for entry to higher judicial service shall visit these judgments and also to visit the other judgments of this judicial mind simultaneously one can also have the privilege to be through one another judicial mind and if time permits one shall be through more than one judicial minds. The civil revision number first of this list is adjudicated. Now 
be parallel with me to be through these judgments. The judgment begins in the ongoing controversy between the parties, landlord and tenant, the provisional rent along with interest and costs came to be assessed by the London Rent Controller by the order dated 27th October 2008 and the matter was adjourned to tender. There was controversy about the date at which rent was payable. Landlord claimed that the rent at the rate of rupees 8500 was payable, whereas the plea raised by the tenant was that the rate of rent had been fixed at rupees 2000 per month. A part of the rent was paid up on 27th October 2008 and accepted by the petitioner landlord under protest. It was thereafter that the petitioner landlord filed an application for ejectment forthwith of the respondent on account of non-payment in entirety of the provisional assessed rent, etc. The plea did not find favor with the London Rent Controller and negativated it by observing that controversy about rent could be decided only after the parties have led an evidence to adduce evidence opportunity in support of the respective plea of the trial. <coughs> London Council, appearing on behalf of the petitioner landlord, here and after referred as petitioner, argued that in view of the law laid down by the Apex Court, in Radesh Vadhaman case and division bench of this court in civil revision, therefore, is incumbent upon the rent controller to evict the tenant forthwith if the provisional rent assessed is not paid on the first date of hearing. A reliance in support is referred. Leave us resisted by the London Senior Council who appeared on behalf of the respondent tenant and argued that in the given situation, it was incumbent upon the London Rent Controller to finally determine the controversy on the conclusion of the trial and then afford an opportunity to the tenant to pay up or face eviction in default thereof. The resistance to the above effect is negativated for want of sanction of law of the land. As already noticed in an earlier part of this order, the Pex Court category laid down in case referred that the eviction of the tenant is the only option available with the London rent controller the moment he comes to the conclusion that the areas of the rents were not tendered on the first date of hearing, then reference is also mentioned and it is cited. The court is of the view that the ratio of the judgment in the case referred leaves no manner of doubt that the provisional rent and other ancillary charges assessed with the rent controller had to be deposited by the tenant on the next date of hearing along with areas, interest and costs, etc., as may be determined by the above said authority. The first date of hearing has all, all been interpreted to mean the first date of hearing after determination of the provisional rent and other expenses by the rent controller. A reading of the conclusions drawn in pair of 30 of the judgment referred leaves no doubt that after determination of the provisional rent, tenant has to deposit the same, nothing remains to be done, and an order of ejectment of tenant has to be passed. The language of conclusion number four 
in the said case is very clear and the needs no further interpretation the court is further of the view that the benefit of conclusion number 5 and 6 would come available to the tenant only on his making a deposit of the provisional rent and other ancillary charges determined by the rent controller and not otherwise it was implicitly made clear that it is bounded duty of the tenant to deposit the provisional rent determined by the rent controller otherwise it will entail the tenant's ejectment from the premises in dispute this court feels that if a tenant is dissatisfied with the interim order passed by the rent controller he has an opportunity to challenge this same before the date fixed for payment in the higher forum the judgment reads for the and concludes there is no warrant for proposition expounded on behalf of the respondent respondent tenant shall be liable to eviction forthwith in view of the conceded provision that the provisional rent was not paid on the first date of hearing in the light of foregoing decision the petition stand allowed the impugned order shall stand set aside the respondent tenant shall have two months time from today to vacate the premises or mansion let us have a pause let us rethink once the judgment of the apex court was clear then the order passed contrary there to by the trial court has no place so if the london rent controller would have been proficient if london rent rent controller had imbibed the ratio of the apex court then certainly order of the rent controller would have been otherwise let us further have a pause here and let us put to ourselves that how big is the responsibility of the judicial officer to remain update with the ratios of the apex court authorities which are binding this revision order of the high court is just stating with assertion as that the law is as has been laid down by the apex court the london rent controller had no option whatsoever to go contrary there to let us have a pause let us sit comfortably let us put to ours as this inefficiency this non imbibing of the value of the ratio of the apex court by the london rent controller is responsible for giving a cause for the revision now here it is self evident that we as judicial officers have to remain up eight we have to imbibe the values of the judgments of the apex court the judgments of the apex court are binding it is law of the land judicial officer has no option but to follow the ratio of the judgment of the apex court simply as 
the ratio of the judgment of the tax court has not been followed by the rent controller it has become the cause for the revision and all implications thereof therefore we shall be proficient enough to imbibe the values of the ratio of the judgment of the apex court this judgment as such is reminder it is a reminder to us as judicial officers that we have to decide by following the ratio of the judgments of the apex court if the london rent controller would have been proficient enough to imbibe the value of the ratio of the apex court is judgment certainly would have been to the contrary there would have remained no cause for revision see how the proficiency are otherwise of the trial court is to save the time the very very valuable time of the high court the proficiency of the trial courts is very essential ingredient public time public money is going to be saved with the proficiency of the trial courts further the judicial officers can be on a proficiency index route or higher judicial service as well the public as well as the individual judicial officer will be directly benefited with their proficiency index now let us be through the second judgment civil revision number 1760 of 2010 cited on 28th of may 2010 is also the same day judgment of honorable justice yanand the respondent husband filed a divorce plea against the petitioner wife of dissolution of marriage on an averment of cruelty and desertion the petitioner wife filed a counter claim therein which was responded by the respondent husband by filing pleadings at the trial in the course of the trial the respondent husband filed a plea to amend the petition to allege that the petitioner wife is suffering from mental disorder the plea was contested with the petitioner wife however the london trial court granted it london counsel appearing on behalf of the petitioner argued that the allowance of the amendment plea would force almost the trial of the controversy even otherwise the argument proceeded the respondent husband ought not to have been allowed to raise that plea 
which was to his notice from the very beginning and which really could not be termed to be based upon a subsequent event. The plea raised on behalf of the petitioner is obvious of the fact that the government with regard to the petitioner while suffering from mental disorder had been taken up in the reply to the counterclaim. It is in the course of the preliminary objection number four thereof that the respondent husband made an argument to the effect that the petitioner wife is suffering from mental disorder. Moreover, as per subsequently knowledge gained by the petitioner, the respondent is suffering from mental disorder. In view of things, it is obvious that the plea for amendment was not based on any fact which may have come to the notice of the respondent husband in a point of time subsequent to the filing of the pleadings at the trial. The petitioner cannot wish away the law laid down by the apex court cited to the effect that it is mandatory on the court to allow all amendments which are necessary for the purpose of determining the real questions in controversy between the parties. We cannot, while in the process of the adjudicatory exercise, be unmindful of the fact the controversies about the about the seasons in the matrimonial relationship of the parties in cases involving a delicate relationship of indicated category, it would be the endeavor of the courts to allow the police to raise whatever issues they desire in as much as that only would enable the courts to adjudicate about the controversy effectively and completely. In light of the foregoing discussion, petition is held to be denuded of merit and is ordered to be dismissed. This order, this judgment deserves to be read more than once to imbibe the values of this judgment, one is to be through it slowly, sentence by sentence. The plea cited in reference to the apex court judgment under reference as such remains as it is. Let me read. Petitioner cannot wish away the law laid down by the apex court to the effect that it is mandatory and court to allow all amendments which are necessary for the purpose of determining real questions in controversy between the parties. See, this ratio of the apex court judgment as well has not been imbibed by the trial court. Is the point being raised. However, the cause being invented for the revision petition is on the face of the ratio of the judgment is without basis whatsoever. The ratio of the judgment of the apex court is amply clear and this ratio has been followed by the trial court. Even then there has been a revision. So here the cause of the revision as well has become 
non-imbibing of the ratio of the judgment of the Peck's court, but by the party defeated at the trial court. See, the first judgment has been of a cause of non-imbibing of the values of the ratio of the judgment of the apex court. This second judgment is also of the cause of non-imbibing of the value of the ratio of the apex court judgment. So we shall sit comfortably and remind ourselves that expectations from us as judicial officers at the trial court is that we shall be proficient enough to imbibe the value of the ratio of the judgment of the apex court cited before us. We as judicial officers will not doing justice even to ourselves when we shall not be imbibing the ratio of the judgments of the apex court. Like that, for our proficiency, we shall imbibe the values of the judgments of one judicial mind, one judge. And if we will continue visiting and imbibing the values of these 15 judgments of justice as the Anand, then certainly we will be having the privilege to avail 40 years experience of justice as the Anand like that when we shall be through the judgments of one another judge, then we will be privileged to have grace of experience and wisdom of another judge. Those among us who are fortunate and privileged to be through the judgments of more than two judges, they certainly are the privileged individuals of our judicial family. Thank you very much.